The years leading up to and during menopause are a rite of passage. The wise woman inside of us is calling to slow down, to take stock, to speak our truth, to burn away all that no longer serves us, ready for our next cycle of life. The good news is with the support, community, connection, and most of all, sharing our stories and being truly seen and heard, we will travel through this powerful, sometimes painful, heroine's journey and out the other side. Welcome to the Menopause Podcast, real and raw stories of midlife and mental health. I'm your host, Kylie Patchett, menopause self-care coach and storyteller, and I am so glad you found us. Let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the podcast. Today, I am so super excited to be chatting to Lois Blackburn. Hello, Lois. How are you? Good morning, Kylie. I'm I'm slightly bemused and befuddled, but that's kind of <laughs> typical for a Monday morning. I love How it. Are it you? Is, How are you? I am well, thank you. I've I've gotten through my Monday. It's Monday afternoon here. I, I do love a Monday afternoon. Feels like you know you can tick that first day off. <laughs> <laughs> Our beautiful woman. I uh, we actually booked this in quite a quite a long time ago, um, and we had to rejig a couple of times. But can you introduce your beautiful self to our listeners in case they have not come across your uh, fantastic flair in the world yet? <laughs> okay, so uh, my name is Lois Blackburn, and mm-hmm. I'm um, an artist. Um, and uh, usually, when I say that, people say, "Oh." Do you do paintings? Um, and I have you to go, say, oh, not exactly. Not, not, not exactly. No, um, I'm. My background actually is in textiles, but mm-hmm. I use all sorts of different um, medium material to to create art with. Um, and um, I, um, I'm. I think it's. I'm driven by who I'm working with Mm -hmm. and the subject that I'm working um, on. So um, I often work um, collaboratively with with lots of different people. Yep. um, And I create work that um, investigates different subjects, often subjects that might be a bit embarrassing or taboo, a bit edgy. Um, And I'm really, really interested in using art as a vehicle to to gay ask questions Mm -hmm. um explore difficult subjects um and then to be able to share that with with other people does that sound a bit confusing or no well we will shed the light more as we discuss because you have one of your fabulous artworks in the background that I can see Mm -hmm. but before Mm -hmm. we get to her I'm interested so when you were younger did you always want to work in textiles or was it textiles the entry point or was the starting of the conversations and the investigating the kind of taboo or tricky tricky things something that was always there I really always wanted to be an artist as a teenager although I loved the idea of being an artist what I wasn't interested in was getting in the hierarchical, hierarchical, mm. hierarchical stuff. Yes. There's such beauty in creating mm-hmm. work and mm-hmm. such beauty in enjoying work and artwork. But I'm not interested in the whole, the capitalist system of commodity. Yes. And art being something that's bought and sold for profit. Yes. That is something that is um, a status that the gallery system as well, where um, art is um, behind glass is uh, a lot of people are intimidated to go into art galleries. Yeah. Um, it's talk about that. It, yeah. A lot, a lot of people you're, you're, um, you'll find, I don't know, maybe it's different in Australia, but in, in certainly in Britain, you know, a lot of people are intimidated by those big, beautiful Victorian galleries that I love going into because yeah. I was brought up, you yes. know, very much that that was part of my life. But for a lot of people, that can be quite intimidating. So there was a lot of stuff that put me off kind of the fine art 
Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a lot of things that um, drew me towards textiles. My mum actually being one of them because she she works in um, in embroidery as well. So, um, but the other things, you know, we're surrounded by textiles and we're surrounded by, you know, we wear we wear fabric, we yes. sit on it, we you know. And so there's and there's these great traditions of um, particularly for women to to sew, yes. um, and. So it has it has a di- a much different way in because the the actual work this is the real hypocrisy and the push and pull of it all but the actual work that is produced um, by by a lot of um, people working in uh, textiles yes. is incredibly powerful and and um, worth as much respect and attention and um, as as anything in oils. I would be one of those people that I don't think I would say I'm intimidated, but art, like going to a Monet, like I think there's a Monet exhibition in Brisbane, which is our closest city at the moment, doesn't interest me at all because to me it's, I don't know, it's untouchable. I I wouldn't call myself an artist by any stretch of the imagination, but I like to sketch and whatnot, but I just don't, I don't know, I've never warmed to anything like that, but but when I see your art, particularly the one behind you, I want to touch it and pick it up and feel it because it's such a, it's so tactile, like we get an immediate experience. But what you're saying, I'm guessing, is that if the establishment doesn't take textiles and the type of art that you do seriously in inverted commas compared to an oil painting that's behind glass and very, you know, could be whatever, then you're saying that your work doesn't get to be as accessible for people. Is that is that what you mean? Like, is that the trade off? No, I just think that if 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 and when um, work does go into a gallery, yeah, it can be. It's changing. It is yes. definitely changing. Yeah, a bit of a snobbery snobbery around it. Yeah, probably because of the fact you know it comes from craft traditions. But you know, as as we know, there's the thing, the trouble with craft and the trouble with beautiful embroideries and things. They were never signed, ah. so there's no provenance. Um, oh, I've never thought yeah. about that. Of course and, not. And if you think about beautiful, beautiful clothes that were made in the past, yes. um they would have been worn till they disappeared, you know. Correct. A beautiful, so that, beautiful yeah. um, item of clothing from um, elaborately stitched, embroidered, yes, would yes, have yes, been yes. passed down from Three generations. the to, to <sighs> the servants, to the, to the people in the fields, and it would have been worn out. There's not the the same visual, um, you know, evidence. As, yeah, it's like as, a, um, as a beautiful watercolor. It's like it's there's no formal pedigree. If that, I don't know whether they're the words that you would use. When did you start? Have you always made textile things to create conversations about the tricky stuff? And if so, where did that? seed of an idea come from to like I know you've got another project called blood sweat which is all around like menopause and all the you know tricky (laughs) tricky bits of that transition which we'll get to as well is when's the first one that you've done have you always done this like I no, no um uh I I I no I haven't I I was um I did a lot of work about collecting and collections, actually. Ooh. Um, and um, of collections. I, yeah, any any collections. People who collect. Uh, but I, I can tell you some of the things we came across. Yeah. So uh, it was things like uh, buttons, which is interesting because I've got a friend with oh, button phobia. Um, oh, I've that's got very a, a, specific. It is, isn't it? Um, I had a, a good friend um, called Sam who had hundreds, has loads and loads of different collections, like. Um, little um, toy poodles, or or um, uh, all sorts of different things. Now I collect fans 
because oh. I'm I'm making fans, um, but they're kind of not. I can't afford the beautiful, uh, expensive, gorgeousnesses of Victorian fans um, and Edwardian fans, and uh, so I I collect um, kind of cheapo Chinese, <laughs> but they still work. I was they still laughing. Work. Before um, we started recording, you said, oh, I need to get a fan. And I'm thinking, how many fans do you own? But of course you're doing them. Of the um, yes, of course you do. I make them as well. Um, so, yeah, now all sorts of different things. I think my first what, my first collection probably was um, crisp packets um, and badges. Did you ever yeah. do the oven thing where you, like, you shrunk them? That was such an... Oh, what was that? 70s or 80s or something. Um, yeah. I'm going to own up to my daughters would be horrified that I'm actually saying this in public, but I actually um, have kept all their teeth. Mm. I don't think that's that unusual. Well, I didn't think it was. Toenail clippings and things. Like yeah, that. that's odd. No, worrying. no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't collect toenail. <laughs> well, gross. No, um, it is a bit weird though because, yeah. well, I, I thought that, it was perfectly normal, but my kids think it's horrendous. And every so often um, when their friends are over, they will go into my jewellery box and there's a little <laughs> blue pouch. It's like, here's all our teeth. I'm like, well, uh, if you ever went missing, I would have DNA samples. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> that's so, a forensic so biologist. Are, um, I think somewhere back in this, uh, in, in time, we you, yes. you asked me about how I got into working with art and, and sharing stories. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so I I um, set up a company with um, a friend um, called Arthur and Martha, and we um, we were doing I suppose what's called arts and health, mm-hmm. and um, we were working. Uh, we started off working with older people, um, and um, and and finding different ways of of creating art with them. Yes, um, and we, at that time we were doing a lot of reminiscence work partner in in the the company phil Mm. was a writer is a writer i should say Uh, and we we found different ways to combine the arts and the writing we did a lot of publications we did a lot of artworks there and um and what was coming up all the time were these amazing stories and it was just trying to find different ways to to share those stories um because um you know, we found that um, not just the telling of the story was helpful, but the sharing, sharing of yeah. the story was helpful. And 100%. then the audience hearing the story was yes. useful. Um, there's great power in all of those stages. And then it's just trying to find different ways um, to do that. Mm. Um so and, and again, yeah. it's um, having the visual art with it can really um, open up conversations that you might not normally have. So, yeah. so I'm thinking I did a project um, in 2019 called the War Widows Quill, and I work with um, uh, Nadine Muller, who's an academic, um, comes from the university, and she was. Um, she had started this amazing project, gathering stories um, mm. of women who um, who uh, war widows, mm. um, and stories that just hadn't been told before. Mm. Um, their experiences hadn't been told before, um, and she was doing case studies, their case studies, um, but was finding that. For some people, it just wasn't the right time for them mm. to share their story. Mm-hmm. And for others, it just was too much to go in there direct and have that conversation. Mm-hmm. And um, and this is where the power of the power, it sounds like I should have a cape. Um, I, I think the I, power I, of yeah. the, the arts comes in. Um, and, and again, this idea of working with textiles, which is really familiar. So it's not yes. scary. Yes. So I came in um, and I created the War Widow's Quilt with these 
oh, um, wow. amazing women. And each person created a square. And I went yes. around the country and did workshops. And wow. uh, the thing was that some people who weren't able already to, to actually sit down and do a proper interview, interview yeah. about their experiences were able to sit down and do something which was much of a more of a sideways in if that makes sense yeah it does what happens is when you're working with your hands and you're working with creativity you you slow down there's that beautiful time when you slow down you know when you embrace when you slow down it's and in that time, you can open up to look at subjects from different angles. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're lucky enough to be in a room working with other people who are slowing down and stitching, you are connecting with other people. But it's that marvellous thing. You know, when, you, when you've got a difficult conversation with somebody, it's sometimes easier to go for a ride in the car. Yeah, yeah? parallel, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. the same goes when you're stitching. So you can, if you sit down and stitch or yes. whatever the activity is, it diffuses things somehow. Mm. And you can start connecting with other people. There's a beauty in that. And I've seen it time and time again, that people just start to yeah, loosen up. Slow down. Quality of those conversations is is fantastic, and and people engage in a different way than you would if you said, "Let's sit down and have a conversation yes. about." And can you tell if me you, about? Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. sit down and you're doing something else, yeah, then it becomes yeah. much more natural. Yes. As you're talking, I am reminded. I used to work in a mental health recovery center, and we had this beautiful lady who. I was an artist and she did art therapy in mental health as well. And I I saw the same sorts of things happen that these pe- people that were would would have usually been quite guarded and quite tense and definitely not, you know, they certainly wouldn't be comfortable with someone directly questioning, you know, with you know, eye contact, et cetera. But in this side by side environment, and this was over a longer, you know, it was over, I think we had 12 weeks and then maybe we had another six. You saw their defenses falling and being much more open. And it was interesting how when they, when it first started, everything was very, you know, people were being very careful about what they were creating. And then over time, there was this beautiful fluidity that happened and much more connection between the members that we had, but also um, we as staff did it as well. So that was, it was, there was no hierarchy. There was no like, I'm a staff member and you are a, you know, none of that. And it was so beautiful. It was such a, yeah, we just had such a positive um, response to that. And it really reminded me of those, like you say, like, you know, if you're having a difficult conversation with the, with the teenager, for instance, go for a car drive, you know, <laughs> that's the parallel, no direct eye contact, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. yeah. It's such a beautiful thing. What was the response to the people that you got to work with in those workshops that were able to be part of, like to have their square be put together in this? bigger representation of a collective experience which would be different for each person incredibly powerful I would say we had different um elements to the war widows quilt so that people could um choose which element theme within that they wanted Ah, to, to work on beautiful so element was to write their names and yes. their uh, husband's names, names and the significant date on, on the quilt and stitch it. And that was, for some, that that was Incredible. so meaningful. And not in ways that I had even considered mm. when I started it. Yeah. So for example, for, for some for some people who 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 die as a result of their injuries or as a result of mental health yeah. issues. Yeah. They have 
you know, PTSD mm-hmm. or men- mental health issues that drug and alcohol related. Yes. As a result of active service, their names, their husband's names won't be, as I understand it, they won't be recorded on the big national or local memorials. So for some of the women, they nursed their husbands for many, many years with ill health as yeah. a result of um, active duty. And their names weren't recognised and it felt incredibly cold. So Awful. to actually have an opportunity to share their husband's name, mm-hmm. their name, was an incredibly important value to have on something that's going to be toured around the country. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was just not something... I, I, I always go into a project and learn so much. And that's the delight of it. Um, so that was incredibly, incredibly powerful and, and not something that... I had considered. The issue was that the women that often we work with, often they did not put their own names. This was a this was a project that was celebrating or and and telling the stories of the war widows. Yes. And for many of them, it was the first time they had been asked about themselves and their experiences Um. because so often we refer to yeah. the man, quite rightly, of course, that has died in it as a result of the war. Yeah. Um, the the huge important stories that the the women have, and in the future it will, it will be it might be men as well as you yeah. know our um, the makeup of uh, and other women as the makeup of our armed forces. Our forces yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and that's the thing as well, you know, some of these, um, we think about war widows as being, you know, elderly yes. ladies, but they're not all. No. <laughs> so, you know, it was a beautiful, beautiful project. And I, I mean, we could spend an hour. Yeah, I've got so many I, questions I know, about yeah, that. I know but, your listeners were also but. interested in the menopause. <laughs> now, yes, let's talk about <laughs> blood sweat and then we're going to come and talk yeah. about the boobs behind you, be able to leap in and touch the boobs. But anyway, our listeners will be going, what the heck is going on in this episode? <laughs> Where did the concept from blood, sweat and tears come up? Was this, I, I, I want you to talk about you were having cocktails with fellow midlife friends and you were thinking <laughs> something needs God. to be done. <laughs> yeah, so, um, well, at that point, um, I hadn't done any solo work for ages. I'd done a lot of these wonderful, wonderful collaborations. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're working with, I do a lot of work with people who've experienced homelessness. I do a lot of yeah. work with a whole range of different people. And mm-hmm. it felt like I, I'd got to a, a point, I bet this was probably, the, I wonder if it was the beginning of my perimenopause. Well, no, I was undervaluing my own story. There you go. That's the start of yeah. perimenopause, if ever I heard yeah. it. <laughs> join the dot what do I know I don't know what I'm doing in the world Who yeah the so I, I was really undervaluing my own story and I thought well I'm working mm. with these amazing people we've all got such powerful stories and <sighs> how can I how can I do anything that's as interesting as that oh well um, I was just searching around but I uh, at this point <laughs> when I did started the, the menopause quilt yeah, bizarrely enough, it really wasn't the hot topic it is now. Absolutely wonderful. It's yes. a huge hot, literally hot topic. Yes, it's a, it's a tsunami of hot topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, um, so I was very lucky to kind of catch on the beginning of the wave, I suppose. Um, so yeah, no, I mean it was just something that was happening to me, and um, and but it wasn't being talked about. Even wasn't even really being talked about me and my mates. Yep. Um, yep, yep. Although, like anything, if you start talking about it, if you feel brave, then we can't shut up. To talk about it. <laughs> yes. But, a little, a little side, but um, had a couple of miscarriages when I was between yeah. between my kids, mm-hmm. and I remember just chatting. I thought, you know, I'm in so much pain here, and I remember one day thinking, "Fuck this!" Yes, excuse me. Which no, I'm going to be brave enough, and I'm actually going to say something to somebody rather than keep this hidden. And I hmm. remember chatting to somebody, and they were like, "Oh God, you know, it happened to me," and yeah. and. It's one of those things that people just don't talk about. And I think that's that's what, I guess that's the theme of today's conversation. Isn't yes. It? Let's talk. Talk. <laughs> Let's talk Let's because talk. 
we're all doing this isolation thing of like, oh my God, I'm really finding this difficult. No one's talking to anyone else, but yeah. we're all having yeah. the same sort yeah. of feelings. Like I've got nothing to offer or my story is not as yeah. spectacular as everyone else's or whatever. Um, yeah. so, so I, I sorry, with the menopause quilt, yes. I can actually think of something where it really changed. Yes. Because that, that thing, I was um, at our local tiny little fun fair. Quite a few years ago with my daughter and um, I ended up on one of these mad rides. Oh, goodness. In hysterics with um, uh, a friend. And I don't know quite how we got onto it, but <laughs> I, took, I took that moment on that ride to start talking about the menopause. And not only were it's we like a bloody... up and down. Yeah, we were jumping up and down on this ride, you know, <laughs> there for our lives. Yes. Testing all our bladder control mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and talking about the menopause. And I thought, Shh, this is amazing. Yes. You know, this is somebody who we can laugh about it, get angry about it. Yeah. And I, and and that started it. And I thought, well, why? This is the perfect theme. This is the yes. perfect theme. Let's, yes. let's get it out there. Um, like you said before. Yeah, so sorry, you, you said before when you were talking about the um work you've done with older people it's the sharing of the story then the telling of the story then the hearer hearing the story and then you know um informing their own kind of viewpoint of the subject and then being able to share their own like that's there is so much power in speaking and hearing and it's so healing to be able to do that as well but when we're just staying quiet joy of making yes 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 <laughs> it's yes. So joyous to use our hands yeah and it's, absolutely. it's the beauty of just celebrating gently challenging yourself you know because I, I'm a big believer in gently challenging yourself uh, and that. because if if that's when you start growing isn't it yes um, and growing confidence if you make mistakes if you kind of like go this isn't quite right I'm going mm-hmm. to work mm-hmm. on it again but yeah you know, and sometimes in life that's really hard to do because we've confidence is so little. But if you can find ways that you can go, okay, that hasn't worked. I'm going to try it from a different angle. Yes. So tell me more about gently challenging versus just challenging. How, like I very much feel like I used to really aggressively challenge myself, like almost like a, a bit of a I don't know, part of my personality of like, let's see if I can do this crazy big thing, like move to the other side of the planet just for something to do, like for shits and giggles. Talk to me more about gently challenging ourselves. Do ask very good questions. (laughs) I've got a curious mind. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, same here. I haven't thought of it before, but I would say on on first first thoughts on that, I think I've always believed in it. Yes. But... I haven't always done it to myself. Mm, so I, I think that it's very easy as a facilitator, as an uh, you know artist, to if you like mm, mm. to do that with other people. Yes, um, and to encourage that with other people. But yes. whether you do that with yourself is very different. I think that that is something that's a that is a bonus. I would say of the menopause for yes. me, and perhaps from what I'm reading, what I'm hearing from the likes of your wonderful podcast, is the uh, I, I was I was on a little jog the other day. Yeah. Mine are very little; they're very little, half an hour. I love that you jog because I used to jog. Oh, I'm so Not proud anymore. of myself for doing that, but um, uh, for getting there. When I, you know, when I started, I I felt like a sack of potatoes, and sometimes. <laughs> You know, it, I, I still feel like a sack of potatoes, but I'm doing it. But um, what I was thinking was, I was going through my the local beautiful wood. I was going up the hill, a little slope. And as I was jogging, I was thinking, this is too hard. I'm going to slow down. I'm just going to walk for a bit. Yeah. And I And I thought to myself, you know what? In the past, I would have pushed on. I would have Me pushed too. on. And, and if I didn't make it, I would have been so annoyed and so peeved yes. with myself. Yes. Um, and I would have just been really felt like, you know, I, I'd failed. failed. I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, and now, now I'm kind of ringing in my head is those words of wisdom. Well, you know, you just slow down. Yeah. Slow down. 
in don't menopause. have to make it that hard. That's why I that's why I asked the question because I'm I'm interested. The word gently has never ever been in my vocabulary. And now I reckon that probably three or four times a day I have to be gentle, gentle with myself or gentle with my expectations or gentle with the fact that my body just does not want to run anymore and would much rather do a very quick yoga class. That that type of and I'm like. So is this, because I, when I read lots of um, books or listen to stories about other people's experiences as well, there seems to be this invitation of slowing down. And then I think also when I interview people like significantly post-menopausal, they're like, yeah, we're, I'm back, you know, I'm back to, and probably not the same as like in our 20s, but I'm just interested whether the gently has kind of been a new thing. It's, mm. yeah. It's interesting. Certainly for myself. Yeah. Mm, Certainly yeah. for myself. I'm kinder to myself. It. Yes. Um, and um, and so it's it, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's easy, it's easy to 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 say to others, but it's it's hard to do for yourself. Yes. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I want to go back to blood, sweat, and tears. So you have um, this idea of doing a menopause quilt. How do you even start? Do you just like hang out your shingle and go? I want people to make squares for a quilt about the uh, menopause. Well, this, uh, th- this was um, this was just a a, a, a solo. So I, I I I thought about my own experiences. I did a lot of research um, about other people's experiences, and I created a quilt where uh, uh, full of paintings of yes. objects that symbolised um, different elements of. Um, uh, uh, of, of of the menopause um, symptoms, really, and some yeah. and and some objects that symbolised um, them, um, some some helpful things as well. Yes. Uh, so it might be um, it might be a, a hot water bottle um, yeah. to symbolise cold flushes. Yep. 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 Um, uh, which my sister had um, when she was going through the menopause. Um, and, um, or oh, it might be um, a fan for a hot yeah. flush. <laughs> yes. It might be, I was like, what, how do I, how do I symbolise the rage? So but how um, did you symbolise the rage? A, a cactus. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I would have yes. gone a voodoo doll. No. <laughs> Oh, joking, yeah. joking, joking. <laughs> Sometimes my rage is that bad, though. I'm like, fuck yeah. out, man. You need to just calm your farm or someone who's going to get really seriously hurt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's go and box, go to the gym and box and get it out. Yeah, yeah. I love that idea. Oh, voodoo, yeah. voodoo, 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 voodoo. I can't yeah. say it. Yeah, that would be amazing. Oh, I'm, you've, you've inspired a whole new range of projects <laughs> now. I love it. I love it. As long um, as they don't actually look like real people, because that yeah. would be bad. That would but, be very bad. Um, so, so there's I created this big quilt covered in these objects, um, um, from a distance, and it's on a big, it's on, um, it's on silk, so it's really kind of um, beautifully Ooh, soft sleeky. and yeah, yes. lovely. Um, and it was all painted using batik. Wow! And so, from a distance, it just looks like a kind of mass of objects and yes. kind of quite sweet. And then you go in and you see, oh, there's some oh. AY jelly. <laughs> so I was like, let's talk about vaginal dryness, Lord. Yes, exactly. <laughs> do you have KYJ oh. in Australia? Yes, yes, we do. We yes, do. Yes. It happens to be the first two letters of my name, too. So, you know, oh, that was so fun. Cool. As a... <laughs> I, I like playing with that. I like playing with expectations. And, so cool. And, um, and then, so I'm... Um, when I when I exhibited this piece as well, so it goes back to telling stories, doesn't it? Because yes, when yes. I so when I exhibited this piece, I always loved being a fly on the wall and just kind of stepping back and watching women's responses. Did you just to do it? that the whole time? I would have had to be. How long was it being exhibited? I would have just been there every day. Uh, with some popcorn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it was delightful because you would I would have women going up to it, going and then just taking a second look and then just bursting into to laughter. Or you know, a lot of people say, Oh, it's not just me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, see, I would go uh, and see art like that, but art that's I don't know, too fussy does not interest me at all. Um mm. 
but that, you know, something that makes me think or challenges my thinking or expands my horizons or challenges the status quo, big fan of that as, you know, <laughs> I, I love to do that. And so that to me is like, Okay. Um, so where did you exhibit? Did you, was it in a gallery? Like what, how do you, how do you even broach yeah. that? So I've uh, made this uh, quilt about menopause and uh, I'm just thinking <laughs> that it might look nice here. <laughs> uh, I, I'm for, the, um, I was a bit of a victim of the, um, of COVID on that one. So uh-huh. it's, it's had one big showing at, at a place called the Festival of Quilts in, um, in Birmingham, which was this big, uh international festival actually of quilts and um i i I exhibited it as part of part of um a group i'm i'm in um but i i do need to pick it up again and 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 it's sat in my studio it needs to get out and find friends and and surprise and surprise people again so yeah have you got a picture that shows because i'm just trying to think for our listeners can can oh yeah i I can share i can share you some photos i would love yeah i'd love that uh, because yeah. people will, well, if they're anything like me, number one, I want to fly there so I can touch it because I'm such a touchy person. <laughs> but um, at least being a Kylie, you could good... you could climb under it. You could put it on your bed and oh, snuggle under stop. it. Stop. See, when I get my voodoo doll out, I can snuggle underneath <laughs> my menopause <laughs> Okay, let's get to the boobs. Let's get to the boobs. Let's put our. I know. I feel like I should be going boobs, 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 boobs. Um, how do the boob quilt? So, you have got how many? Did you say one hundred and hundred eighty? One hundred and eighty boobs. One hundred eighty. One hundred and eighty people. One hundred and eighty boobs, all sewn together into a quilt. Yeah. All different shapes, sizes, looks, feels, textures, colors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all made by different, different women. Yes. Yes. All yes. representing themselves. Or what was the brief when they when went when they wanted to be part of the boobs? Yeah. So I I would invite them to create a um a boob. Everyone yes. got the same size piece of fabric. Yes. But it shows what color they wanted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um and um <clears throat> the brief was they could they could create a boob that reflected um their story. Yes. Um, or it might Although yeah, that's that's a big ask in itself because you know a woman of I think I'm fifty I, I have to ask my kids when how old I am I think I'm fifty four um, who cares <laughs> I think I'm yeah I think I'm fifty four yeah anyway um, I, I you know I've had a lot of life in these boobs yes uh, yes 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 and, and, and my word had yes all different experiences um, so um, yeah so it it might be just one aspect yes. Um, of your life that you want to draw on and yes you could make a representation of your story yeah um but so um it might be a fantasy boob it might yeah, be yeah. um it, it, it might be all sorts of different different aspects um and um and 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 what I also did though which worked really beautifully on this one was I said if you would like to write about your experiences Ooh. do that uh, so Ooh. on, the, so, there, so that there's the actual visual element, yes. and then people could go away and they could reflect on their own story and and write a paragraph or yeah, yeah, yeah. a page, and all of that is my next big part of the project, which is to finish editing the catalogue with all those stories in. But they're remarkable, absolutely. Oh my goodness! Remarkable. Yeah. What what surprised you? about this project because you said before um, like... yeah okay so I would say how open people are actually once oh. again it goes back to that thing about you know wow. the menopause or or miscarriage or miscarriage whatever or, yeah. yeah 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 you yeah. think that people it's going to be because this is a really taboo subject isn't it it's really mm. embarrassing and it's really really loaded it's yep. so loaded with different. Well, I, it's so loaded because boobs are like there's so many different connotations to boobs, like feeding babies, sexual attraction, blood. Like, and then I'm thinking about friends that have had mastectomies, or it, yeah, so many different layers to how boobs. What I mean, 
I guess if you ask all 180 people, they're going to have a different way of even looking at their boobs or thinking about boobs in general. Wow. Yeah. So uh, what I was delighted about, because I, you know, when you know, I, I come up with these ideas and think this is a great idea, but how are people actually going to respond to yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, um, obviously there's embarrassment when you start talking about it and there might be a lot of giggling, particularly with the younger, because uh, I worked in some schools as well. Um, there was a lot of giggling there. Um, but, I you imagine. know, if I, I go in pretty calm and mm-hmm. do my bit and there's this outpouring. It's like mm-hmm. we want to be heard. And um, and and maybe because so often breasts don't feel our own. They yes. they they you know they're kind of objectified and yep literally handled by other people. Yep, yep. Maybe that a baby, your partner, mm. hopefully that would be a nice thing, or yep. um, you know unwanted. Yeah, or unwanted doctor, attention, or yep. or yep. somebody else's eyes, or yep. whatever. Exactly. Um, so it's um oh, let's reclaim them and 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 actually um so what surprised me was how open people were yeah. and what delighted me was that actually um this project has actually improved how some people see their own bodies. Oh, their own wow. Bodies. wow. I don't know how long that effect will last, but you know, I've I've done evaluation on this mm-hmm. and it was one of the questions I asked, do you see yourself differently and and your breasts differently? And people were, do you have you know, have you a a, a, a better sense of self on yeah. that? And, and people were it, you know, getting together, this works, it yeah. works. Yeah. Get together, talk about get together with our yeah. um other uh, other people with similar experiences talk share stories support yeah. each other mm-hmm. let's be let's support each other and and then you know tell your story and mm. and feel that you're being heard yeah. and feel that also that other people um you might be able to support other people as well yes yeah you know because your story might be heard by somebody else who's going through a similar story who yeah. who, who who might just feel a little less alone mm. um, and so yeah and and then actually making something as well and all the joys of making and 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 just have fun yeah that's what I as I keep on coming back to all this magic of the stories is happening but it's happening almost as this byproduct to the fact that you're doing something that as you said before is slowing down using your hands getting out of your head relaxing your body being side you know we're not saying what do you think about your boobs like it's not that you know blatant sort of you know questioning it's more of a softer when when you had groups of women together what's the youngest and the oldest that took part in the boob quilt Mm. um 11 is the youngest (gasps) wow yeah um wow a delight as well um I would I didn't actually ask the oldest but yeah. I would I would I would surmise about in 80s in the 80s 80. wow yeah I wonder it would be so hard to to map but the scientist in me is like I wonder how you've just changed the trajectory of that 11 year old's relationship with her boobs for the rest of her life well, I think her mum would have done that because her mum was a, um, a, a a breast care nurse. Ah, oh, fantastic! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing. And, and um, I, I also, the, I'm really, really passionate about finding ways with my projects to get a diverse a group as possible mm-hmm. within. Mm-hmm. That. So, um, and so people from very different backgrounds. Yeah. Um, that's really, really important to 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 my work, to my projects. Yes. Um, whether that's social economic, um, or um, ethnicity, whatever, I'm yeah, really whatever. In that. Yeah. Um, but also on this project, I wanted to include people, um, anyone with an experience of yes. rest. 
Yeah. So whether so I included um in this project, I, I had um uh um privilege of working with um a trans support group as yes. well. That's what I was about um, to say, did you? Wow, yeah, which was so absolutely cool. Fabulous. Um, and, um, so then, then I work with trans men and trans women because they both have experiences. They have had experiences. Yep. Exactly. Or want exactly. experiences of rest. Yes. Either don't want them or want them. Wow. Were they together? Look at the, the trans men and trans women together. And so when you were doing. And non-binary as well. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Yeah. So when you were bringing groups of people together to make their boob. Yes. Was it always like how many people are we talking? You're talking 50 boobs at a time, I was <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I'm just I, I'm fascinated at the practicalities of like you decide to make a quilt with boobs on it, and then it's like, okay, so so you did you tour around like you did with the war widows one? Yeah, yeah. So oh, I wow. would um I personally um like p- uh, to work with smaller groups because I yes. think then you don't get you less likely to get one person dominating yeah, um, yeah, yeah. the um the 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 subject and 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 the quieter people are more likely to to get involved yeah so um i mean ideally i actually like working with groups um uh, <clears throat> of uh, about eight to ten but i yeah. will work with um much bigger as well uh, the biggest group i work with was actually one of the schools which was um 18 but i prefer the more successful groups in the schools were about eight to ten people yeah, yeah, yeah. um and the same with uh, so i worked i worked with um quite a few women's groups yeah um I worked with um I, I I've got uh, I've, I've done a lot of work with um a day center for homeless people mm-hmm. um and I I work with um a women's group there um and another one um another group um for vulnerable women which was really powerful yeah. um I work with quite a few um groups um cancer groups survivors and people who are actually going through tra- treatment at the moment um i yeah, work, as I said work with the schools the trans group um also um with a group of people who have poland syndrome which is something i have um and, um uh, other groups and um uh which Oh, art students as well. That was great. Oh, cool. Whole range of different people. And then also I I opened it up to anyone, anyone who wanted to join in um and and sold packs. Um I did some crowdfunding and sold packs on Etsy as well. Yeah. And so other sites um, were available. It's only just finished, isn't it? Like we're only just talking about the finished product. Just I've only I've finish the quilt i've still got yes. to, to sew something Do on the back edge. so it can be hung yeah gotcha. um it's going to be exhibited very shortly um uh it's first exhibition i should say i haven't finished the catalog but um i'm hoping to get that out yeah. shortly um and as i said it has all these amazing stories in it and pictures of each um well piece and uh pictures of a lot of the people who made them as well oh, amazing. Or photos of, of of the people who made them um so I'm really proud of that catalogue I think it's going to be really really insightful and uh, really interesting um I can say all these things because uh, uh, it's it much of the words aren't mine so I can but do you be... know what though what a fabulous experience like he is like tipping our hats to you having these magical ideas that then allow people to come and do work that's no doubt healing in a lot of ways and also as you said like offering support and being supported which is the magic of being in circle anywhere but then to be able to actually share the stories behind as well like ah it's very cool and when you are done can you let me know how to connect the show notes to that? Because then people, when Most they're definitely. watching it in yeah, the, I've, uh, I've, 
watching slash listening yeah. in the future, we'll be able to get to the to the boob quilt. Yeah, not, yeah. Not just as your love, backdrop. Love that. <laughs> amazing, amazing. What um what are you called to challenge next? What topics are tap tap tapping on your well, apart from obviously the voodoo doll, which we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful because it's got so much humor and kind of wickedness in it yeah you know what there's a lot to be said about rage and anger in women we've been taught not to have it not to say it not just you know not to be scared of it scared of its power bloody blah blah. anyway Um, is there anything that you yeah yeah that you're happy to share because may not can i can i just go back a second yes because you're 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 you've a science background haven't you so and research yeah so i i just one of, this was one of the things that caught my eye when I first thought about this project, and I just yes. want to share this with you. So, um, so sadly, for many women, a negative body image can be a destructive thing. Well, we know that, don't we? But yep, sure do. A recent uh, a global study of women um, uh, suggests that seventy percent of women are dissatisfied with their breast size with women reporting they are less likely to practice breast self-examination oh, no which has a direct impact on their health no goodness all right mm. if you're listening first of the month is check day ladies if you don't know how to do it why well, in australia at least there's so much information from breast cancer um advisory groups etc yeah i'm not sure if that's across the world but we often will say the first of the month is like you know if you're not checking regularly regularly first of the month is when you need to be checking um that actually makes me want to or it kind of connects in my mind to um how important being connected to our bodies are for our mental health So when I was doing my yoga for the stages of menopause training, there is a direct link that's backed up with so much evidence that the more we can be in our bodies with things that will help us with like interoception, like where we are in space and just connecting to, oh, my heart rate is a little bit higher or my belly is a bit hungry or whatever, has direct impacts on our mental health. And I just... I can't help but thinking that the body image and the connection to our bodies is a disconnect there for a lot, a lot of us that have that dissatisfaction. And it's just like, we can't just, can't just say I'm rejecting my body because there's so many things that happen as a on flow of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really interesting, isn't it? Far out. Well, one one of the, um, uh, getting back to the comfort, you see, I can't move away. <laughs> but, I love um, comfort. Yeah, one of the um side effect side use bonuses um of the the comfort working with the kids working in the schools yeah. um was I worked with a school nurse which was fantastic and the teacher um yeah. and um and and in one of the schools um it actually came from the 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 young people who were um 14 15 mm-hmm. conversations um very powerful conversations with them um but they they actually requested um that the nurse shows them how to do oh. self examination so it came from them it came from this project so and now good. they're working with a charity called Copperfield yeah. which i don't know if it's just a uk yeah charity, i don't know but yeah, so Copperfield, they work with young people um, mm-hmm. and they do really fun videos about self-examination, trying yeah. to kind of um, break down those boundaries. And yes, just yeah, 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 yeah. Make them more accessible. Um, and they're working with that charity and some of the girls that did my project yeah. are becoming um, boob ambassadors. Boob ambassadors. Oh, my God, I love Boob it. ambassadors in the school. <gasps> They're talking that, you know, from the the work they did with me, um, they are now um, working with other kids in the schools to talk to in the school to talk about their boobs. And they're even training up the next lot to replace the ripple them. effect. Yeah, oh, that's cool, isn't it? 
Oh, I hope you actually lock that away in your heart for well, those, any any other moments that you go, what, what I don't have anything to do, 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 do like, uh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I call yeah. bullshit on that little voice. Oh, you know, Lois. Can I, can I just ask something? Yes, because I, or give us a little bit of food for thought as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there were, the, I, we covered a huge, huge array oh, yeah. of, <laughs> of subjects yes. within the breath stuff a yeah. lot of it was negative a lot uh-huh. of it was uh, about how um disappointed we are or how um a backache because our boobs are too big mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. or yeah. um you know all the things all you could yeah. think of mm-hmm. was the pleasure yeah and why is and that appreciation yeah why why in this project are most of the stories about the pain and why is it something that I was saying I don't know or as women why are we not talking about pleasure Hmm. that's a very good question the things that jump to my mind is exactly what I just said about anger and rage it's like we're not allowed to talk about the fact that we enjoy something surely good girls are not supposed to enjoy like I don't know I I work I end up working a, a lot around the good girl slash people pleasing aspect of the patriarchal conditioning. And I think a big part of that is you are here for our pleasure and objectification, but you're certainly not here for your own pleasure. <laughs> so I don't know. Is there a disconnect there? I don't I yeah, I don't know. I think women are definitely conditioned to be dissatisfied with their bodies through, you know, being drowning in social media that says the only the only valid body is the tall, thin, blonde you know, big boobed, but naturally perky, <laughs> you know, version of womankind. So is that part of it? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, and maybe sexual pleasure did not come up. Really? And, and I just want, yeah. And and I just wonder if, again, is it, is it easier? Maybe it's like how our brains are almost, I don't say conditioned, but we're, it's easier to remember the negative things, isn't yeah. it? And today than the positive things, you kind of got to try and yes, re yeah your yeah, brain, yeah. don't you? Sometimes, but um, I don't well, know. Yeah. Interesting. When you come down to it, your brain is there to uh, warn you of threats. So we are trained to look for the yeah. We, it, it is a it's a yeah. Well, two things mindset wise. If you go way back to the beginning from human behavior, it's like. Number one, what is in my environment that could damage me? And number two, what is there that I expect to see? So if you've been brought up in a household where boobs do not mean pleasure, then you don't even notice the things in your environment that equal boobs, equal pleasure. So, yeah, it's like we filter things out that we don't expect to see. Hmm. You've left us with a very good, chewy food for thought. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's take pleasure in them. Ladies. Yes, exactly. God. <laughs> well, let's take pleasure in our our bodies. Full stop. Like that was one of the yeah. most stunning things to me about the yoga chain that I was just talking about is just the simple, simple ways that we can offer ourselves pleasure um, that don't necessarily have to be anything sexual or even sensual, but just rolling around on the floor just because because it feels good and it's a bit playful and it opens up this little giggle inside of you or whatever. Like that sort of pleasure. You know, um, like you were saying before with the running, it's like, you know, we've kind of, is it that like, oh, you've got to push, it's got to, got to, got to, got to mean something, you've got to sweat, we've got to whatever. And it's, yeah, maybe we just mm. need to soften, 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 gently, gently, gently. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. <gasps> It has been an absolute bloody joy. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. I know it's Monday morning, your time. Um, I hope you've woken got up out. now. <laughs> you, you've been my, you've been my big strong coffee. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You can yeah. have a shot in the arm anytime you want. <laughs> um, I will definitely connect in the show notes to your beautiful self online. Do you want to just shout out your website or what's the best place? Is Instagram best place to find you? Um, my website, um, I should know, shouldn't I? Because it's nice and easy. It's just Lois, L-O-I-S, Blackburn, yes. Yes. artist, 
Well, that's all one word. Beautiful. Dot UK. Dot UK. And then, dot UK. And then my Instagram. I think it's just your on Instagram. Um, I'm sure we'll be in your notes. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, my Instagram is artist Lois B. Beautiful. Yeah, and, um, come take will... a look and then... And I'll be on to the next project and and looking for more people to embrace the next project and join in and and, and think about. And if you want to make your own voodoo doll, just get in touch with me. We could have an international voodoo doll project now. Yeah, I'm I really think James not Bond, that. James Bond, uh, voodoo. That was Roger Moore, wasn't it? And his I think so. Yes, I can't. I can't say it for some reason. I do apologize. Well, anyway, <laughs> which yes. is much too polite to be talking about stabbing something into it. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, Lois. It's been an absolute joy, and I will make sure oh, it's that been we a joy. Have all those connections that we talked about in our show notes. So, yes. thank you very, very yeah, much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening into today's episode. If you love the show, as I hope you do, please take the time to subscribe on your favorite pod listening platform and rate and review. And for bonus points, if you have a friend or someone who popped to mind as you were listening to this episode, why not hit the share link wherever you're listening and send them a little love bomb. Like, listen to this. Did you know this is normal? <laughs> I really, really, really would love to get these beautiful stories into the hearts and ears and minds of so many more midlife mavens and your help spreading the love is truly, truly appreciated. Thank you so much. I'm Kylie Patchett, your host, and have a spectacular day.